They're not going to let the comics default, in my opinion. They'll just say, oh, ISIS hit us, and they attacked the Sears Tower, and down the street is the CME group and some other stuff. Uh, we're going to have to shut down the market for a while, you know, just like they did on 9-11, except this would be the commodities market. Investors today face an unprecedented level of risks. Currency risk, major market indexes, natural deflationary forces, and endless money printing from central planners. Meanwhile, most savers today are being told to stay the course with high commission products and risky investments dependent on fraud. There is another way forward with peace of mind investing, a financial strategy with four key principles, safety, income, currency risk, and finding cash gushing value investments. Learn more about these financial strategies at fmtadvisory.com slash income. Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. We got a, a returning guest today. His name is Joe. He is from Tampa, Florida. Uh, his YouTube is JSNP4. He's an expert. He, he does just such detailed and deep analysis on just everything across the board, unfiltered, unrestrained from mainstream agenda. Uh, he's here with us, and we're going to have a great conversation today. Joe, thanks for joining me. Hey, not a problem. Glad to be back. Joe, there's been a lot of craziness uh, in the markets. There's been craziness with terrorist attacks. Uh, we have had the most recent terrorist attack here in Brussels, Belgium. Uh, you know, we, we got a lot of things going on and I just want to get your, just your initial thoughts on, you know, what has been going on in Europe and, you know, do you, do you think this was a false flag event? Um, could we call it a false flag event? You know, maybe like San Bernardino or even what happened in Paris. Uh, let's get your thoughts on this. Well, keep in mind the, they're linking one of the masterminds of the Paris attack to this. They sure are. So I, re I recall watching a video that was surveillance video from one of the uh, bars in Paris when the attack happened, and they slowed it down. Whoever downloaded it slowed it down so you could see kind of slowly but surely what was happening on the scene. And it shows a lady outside of the building, and the, the front door is pure glass. You know, you can see right through it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she reaches into her purse, grabs a metal somewhat cylindrical object, throws it through the window, thus breaking the window, and smoke comes out of it as that's happening, and then she runs inside. Hmm. So that makes me say, you know, when I see something like this, it may it does make me want to question it. And when they so start what's saying, the implication you know, the of that? Uh, I'm sorry, I, did, I wasn't 100%, you know, sure what the implication of the lady doing that. Well, to me, I mean, why would, if you're just having lunch or dinner or whatever at a restaurant, a little bar or pub, why are you outside and then you reach in your purse throwing what appears to be like a smoke bomb looking device that is able to smash the window and then you open the door as after it's smashed you open the door and go in mm. so that that to me implies they want to make it look like it's a lot of stuff happened bombs went off there's shattered glass everywhere like you know like a bomb went off but she just walks inside it just there was some very fishy stuff about it you know um i also read that um the, the, me the metal band that was there playing at the concert where the main attack happened in France, um, he said there were six or seven security guards, uh, and as he walked b backstage to get ready for the show, he says he sees this security guard that was in charge of the whole backstage area, and he says to his manager, who the hell is that guy? He's, he's giving me the creeps. There's something wrong with that guy. I don't, I don't, I don't like him. Re replace him. Get somebody else over here. And his manager tells him, well, I can't. There were supposed to be six others, and they didn't show up. Hmm. So the guy wouldn't make eye contact with anybody. He was very suspicious and scary, like the way he was acting, almost as if he knew what was going to happen. You have six other security guards that don't show up that day? Six? Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's there's just some fishy stuff. The hard thing is we all have to play, you know, armchair quarterback. And what we get usually is from CNN, Fox News, you know, the same regurgitated video, the same three seconds, like this last one in, in Brussels that so the airport. They've got someone like sweeping view back and forth with all the smoky area. It's like whoever was taking the video wasn't concerned at all that a bomb just went off and there might be more. 
they're showing a sweeping view on their what appears to be maybe a cell phone camera, left to right, back left to right, like just so you can get a nice view of everything. Mm. Now, again, if it, this is a, like an emergency situation, you're going to be running for your life or ducking and hiding. You're not going to be just standing there, you know, moving a video camera around, whether it's your phone or a real camera. You know, just there's just some suspicious stuff. But when you look at the damage, yes, a bomb absolutely went off. There was some damage, you know. So I don't, I don't deny that those things are happening, and it's really hard to say, is it a false flag 100% or partially, or, you know, because the other issue is they're bringing these people in. Every country in the EU practically is saying, hey, yeah, we got to be, you know, let's be kind, and all of a sudden, let's let these refugees in. And as you've seen, they're out there raping women and causing all kinds of problems uh, across the board in all these countries. And again, it's not like they just showed up one day at the border and said, hey, do you think you guys could be a little more you know, kind to us and let us in? Oh, yeah, you know what? Come on over. No, this was like an EU thing. Hey, everybody, we're going to start literally going after refugees and bringing them in. And they say, well, most of them are women and children. And then what you find out when you look, just, just look at the videos of them streaming in. These are like what I would call fighting age men, young men. Yeah. So yeah, who's you're, doing you're, that? The government's doing it. So when we get attacked or they get attacked, oh, they're, they're linked to ISIS and they're linked... You're letting him in. You're, you're, give, you're opening the door, and not even just opening the door, you're going to bring him boats and airplanes and trains and shuttling him in. Mm. So then when it happens, you know, oh, my gosh, we got to work. We, what are we going to do about this? We're going to have to go to war. Well, as a, a trends forecaster named Gerald Salente, many people have heard of, he always says currency wars, trade wars, and real wars. We already yeah. see the currency wars and the trade wars. So they're gearing us up for the real war, mm. and they're going to make sure all Christians hate Muslims and Muslims hate Christians so that when it's time to pull the trigger, no one complains whatsoever, which is why you're seeing these terrorist attacks, and they keep using the word radical Islam, radical Islam, radical Islam, so that you just blanket statement Islam that they're all terrorists, they all just need to go, so that when they take you to war, and as Gerald says, you know, when they run out of things to do, the economy's busted, they can't fake it and fudge it anymore. When they have to finally deal with it, they take you to war. It's wow. so true. Well, obviously, no matter who it is that's doing this, people are actually dying and people are being hurt. So the, the people behind it, whoever's doing it, are bad people so i i want to ask you i mean what are the implications you know you kind of touched on it but what what are the implications of if it is a false flag you know what it what are they trying to do where is this going i mean is it a is it a gun control issue uh you talked about what gerald salente would say i mean wh where is this going joe oh well in a case like this where it's something that starts in the eu and hasn't happened here you know yet they say but once again, we've also brought in tens of thousands of those refugees here in America. And I, I did a few videos a while back and said, look, I, I got a sneaky suspicion Chicago might be the area that they want to go after. And no sooner did I say this, which I've said a few times, but I hear on the news, oh, there was a, one of these re uh, recently Im immigrated people or whatever. Uh, they were riding around in a van in, uh, in uh, Chicago. And they yelled out loud, we're ISIS and we're here to kill you. I said, you got, I, you could, I couldn't possibly get that right on accident. Mm. That Chicago is going to be a target. And then literally a day or two later, we hear on the news, they, they, the police couldn't track the van down. But they said they were from ISIS and they're here to kill us. And, they, and then they sped off. Was there it's, a reason you, you suspected Chicago? My personal reason, and, and I'll say it 100%, this is my opinion and my opinion only. But... The COMEX group, right, the ones who run the, the, the commodities market, most importantly, precious metals, which is traded on there, is out of Chicago. So the CME group, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, is in Chicago. So if, God forbid, if they had a problem delivering physical gold and silver one day, they're not going to let the COMEX default, in my opinion. They'll just say, oh, ISIS hit us, and they attacked the Sears Tower, and down the street is the CME group and some other stuff. Uh, we're going to have to shut down the market for a while, you know, just like they did on 9-11, except this would be the comp, you know, the commodities market. So shortly after that as well, I see that there's this protest out of nowhere right in front of the CME group. I said, I've never in my life seen anybody protest in front of the CME group. Who would even know to do that? The average person doesn't even know what this company is. <laughs> Why right. would they all of a sudden? And then I trace it back to another protest group that's affiliated once again with George Soros, in front and center of the protest, 
is, I believe, Bill Ayers, you know, Obama's buddy from back in the day. Um, so I find that very suspicious of why, what that has to do with anything. You know, I almost felt like, are they setting us up so that later on, if there's an attack, they can blame it on a radical group or one or another? Uh, you know, and I don't know, but I, I just felt like there, there's a real good reason, and that the reason is the Comex market is run out of New York. You know, uh, um, excuse me, uh, Chicago. Chicago, right, right, right. Yeah, no, that that's interesting. I, and you know, we know that there's definitely a lot of manipulation going on. You know, we saw precious metals take off pretty substantially here in 2016, bottoming out over in what was it, January 17th or something, 19th. And you know what we've seen here. Uh, as of the last week or so, is gold kind of hitting that 1280 mark. And I, I know you refer to them as the club. The club yes. just did not want gold to go over 1280. And, and actually, silver, too. I mean, silver hasn't been allowed to, to touch 16. So any thoughts yeah. on precious metals here in uh, 2016? Yeah, I, like you just said, I, they're, they're off to the races, and you could just see the club doing everything they can to just stop the price rise. You know, gold's almost touching 1300. I believe silver did touch 16 or 1602 or three or something like that. And then it bounces back a little bit. And then as you saw a few, you know, was it yesterday or the day before, this huge waterfall smash. Silver was down like 50 cents. Gold was down, I think 40 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. You know, it was down in like 1230, you know, it was just up to 1270-ish. You know, so it's like, it, Again, it's like the same thing, the same reason. You know, it's the end of the month. Oh, it's options expiration time frame, and we're, you know, just as if there's these people. Whether you're someone really hedging for some purpose, you know, like a business hedging, you're a miner or something. Like you're really going to do that every single month at the end of options expiration. You're just going to flood the market with with sell orders. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're a miner. If you're a mining company, you want the price to go up. You want more bank. You know, you want more money for the product. Yeah. So. Who in their right mind would hedge against it? Well, you, naturally, you'd say, well, maybe the maybe a company that needs the metal. But the truth of the matter is, you look at the COT reports from the COMEX, and it's the what they call the commercial category, which is simply the big banks. So you don't have why would there be a big bank hedging? There's no purpose. There's no point whatsoever. It should be a company that deals with metal, not a bank. So I mean, the proof uh, is there. It's blatantly obvious. It's there for anyone to see. But I do believe we have not under any circumstances seen the last of gold and silver they did this last little smash down here recently but when you look at the numbers i think uh silver eagle sales i believe i just read um the la last record for january or, or excuse me the first quarter maybe it was was 12 million sales uh silver eagles and now it's over 13 yeah yeah and then, now and it's, then it's over 13 now so there's already another record it's like every single year there's a new record yeah. New record sales, new record sales. So my question is, where is the club going to get this excess you know, demand and, and deal with it? And personally, I believe there's always a terrorist attack right around the corner when you need one to stem things or stop things from happening. Yeah. But um, if, you, if you read Cliff's High or, or watched his video recently, <clears throat> he talks about uh, what appears like he, what he says from the data from his robot report is showing like silver getting stopped due to it going too high in a given period of time and then the stops are hit and then it goes let's loose again the stops are hit again like two or three times in a day and he was quoted as saying you know i think it's a dollar move which it, he didn't know it's not correct it's three dollars for silver so three dollar if it's a three dollar move i think in a 15 minute or whatever the window of time is that stops are hit and it doesn't matter if it moves up or down but if it hits if it's a three dollar move they halt it for a little bit and then they let it go again <clears throat> when you start to see that happening good night because i remember some old reports that and it's mentioned out in the future you're going to see fil uh, silver moving five dollars a day and then when you think that's crazy not too long after that you're going to see twenty dollars in a day moves wow and it's been in the data for a long time and i hate to say it but when stuff is in the data and that report for a long period of time it's almost like it's written in stone it's gonna happen it's just in the future um, it's hard to say exactly when, but I mean, just look around the world, look at the, the, the sales, you know, there are more and more people getting involved. So yeah, it'll I, definitely take some breaking of the manipulation for that to happen. And, uh, you know, I was talking to actually trace mayor earlier, this interview will come out and he was telling me that the, 
the CME, I mean, they're, they're doing things right now to continue to manipulate the way uh, the cash settlements are done regarding the deliveries uh, for the futures market here. And uh, they're doing things, in, you know, we don't know what, to continue to hold it all together, to allow them to continue to have a larger control on the, the demand because it's all about you know controlling the paper price and as long as they control the paper price uh, they control the perception on the market and yes. you know, even with the stock market right now you know with what they've been able to do in just the last few weeks by lifting prices you know high frequency trading you know mystery buyers the stock market rising is kind of putting people at ease again and of course slamming precious metals down you know lets people know oh okay well i guess the fear trade is off now because everyone's seeing gold rise they know that's a fear trade but and then seeing you know the stocks go up too it kind of go oh, okay you know things are going back to normal and, and it's all about controlling that perception across the world that they're able to kind of keep this game going so yeah, any thoughts Joe yeah I mean they, they control all of the world's markets essentially through America it's, I mean our market our exchange it's our COMEX market right it's, it's our market setting the prices it's you know price of oil price of gold price of silver it's all set literally on Wall Street well via the COMEX or the NYMEX they both control the price every day so it's going through our system you know i think i don't know if it was the last time we talked but we were i think we probably got into it if i recall we were talking about the uh contract like a, a contract of gold on the comics it's worth 100 ounces but you can take out a, that contract for 10 percent of what that would cost mm. so you only have to come up with 10 ounces of gold worth of money to actually play with 100 ounces but the contracts for 100 ounces so in theory, you would say, okay, well, if I pull out a contract, there better be 100 ounces in a warehouse or somewhere in a vault backing that. And they say, well, yeah, yeah, that's the case. But it's not really the case. And the numbers have been as high as 100 to 1. So 100 paper contracts for one real 100 ounce uh, contract of gold. Doesn't make any sense. Then that number went to 200 to 1. Then it was over 300 to 1. Not, and that's when I think we may have last talked, it was like 300 to 1. Since then, I've read at one point it was 500, a little over 500 to one. Right. So all they do is they just print more paper and flood the market with more paper. And it's not like a bunch of people are going there to buy it. It's the club themselves printing it and then buying it themselves so that they hold the lion's share. Yeah. So that when other people do say, oh, there's a trend here, let's jump in on it. Let's get in on that momentum. There's well, not enough people in the world to get in on that momentum when the club owns the lion shares of that stuff. And they just flood the market back and then they buy it back up after the price drops. Yeah, I mean, the... The Bank of International Settlements estimates what one quadrillion worth of derivatives going around worldwide. Um, I mean, the club at this point, you know, I'm going to use that word since I'm talking to you yeah, now. Absolutely, the club, <laughs> the club is dependent on ultra low, zero, and negative interest rates to continue to do what they do. They borrow and they speculate and you know i don't think i mean i don't think they can afford to raise interest rates in this environment i, I don't i, I, I don't know agree. what they're gonna do um you know and how long this can go on because they raise interest rates there's a lot of deflating of bubbles that will happen and uh, there's a lot of it could happen very quick and be pretty dramatic out there so i don't know how this is going to end it's all very unprecedented well, we'll think about this. Most, and I mean most, derivatives are interest rate related. So all you have to do is move the interest rates just a little bit. doesn't take much because all those derivatives are also leveraged. So just like that, the example with the gold, you, you know, you, you pay 10% worth to get 100 ounces, you know, 100% 100, 100 of the, the thing, the contract. It's the same way with these derivatives. They're, a lot of these derivatives are bought on margin, you know, so it's, everything's like on margin and they have these you know insurance products called credit default swaps which isn't really insurance because they don't want to get hit for insurance and have to follow certain regulations so they made up this name called credit default swaps to bypass it actually being insurance even though it's insurance mm. and all it says is if you fail on these bad bets you made i'm an insurance company and i'm going to back you up i'll give you the money except it's not really insurance companies 
it's the same two big to fail banks backing each other up with the credit default swap. So if one goes down big time, the next one can't afford to bail him out, and then he ain't gonna be able to afford the next one. It's just a big chain, you know, daisy chain. So when these derivatives fail, it's gonna be spectacular. And like you said, with the interest rates, we saw what they did in 2008. They brought interest rates down to near zero. And we've been sitting at that level for so long, and then all of a sudden, you know, just a few months ago, December, oh, we're gonna raise it up just a teeny tiny, you know, almost a quarter, whatever percent. Um, and, and that, you know, we're going to keep going after that a little bit, you know, a few more months later. Like you said, if they do that, how many other interest rate derivatives are now affected by this, for one thing? And number two, if that was the solution previously to, to lower the rates during an economic downturn, everything is multiple times worse than it was in 2008. So you need a heavy duty lowering of the interest rates, which you can't do, or else you go into negative. So... Now you know, we're hearing the Fed starting to talk about that a little bit. Well, we're not really looking at it, but we're kind of are. We don't need to talk about it, but we might. And you know, there, there's language like that. Like, and if, well, in the future we might have to, but not right now. You know, so, so you look at what the EU's doing; they're going negative. Hmm. If they do the same thing, they have no choice but to go negative. And if they go negative, that's like essentially you and I paying our bank to store our money while they get to lend it out to other people, out like they always do. No one's going to do that. They're going to want to take the money out. So what, of course, the government's going to end up doing, because of course they know it way in advance, capital controls. Yeah. You won't be allowed to take a lot of money out. You won't be allowed to move your money. You know, That's what happens. So that's another reason why I'm a huge proponent of precious metals. Yeah. And not just precious metals, but the ones that you get and keep at your house, that you own and you control, so that if there's any capital controls, you are completely unaffected. It's in your safe. It's in your house. No big deal. At the same time, People still don't want to believe in that or can't do it or whatever the reason. They say, well, I got a lot of cash, though. I, I would advise getting it out of the banking system, at least you know a chunk of it, stored in your safe, because I do feel uh, capital controls will be coming ultimately. It's one of these, again, it's one of these plays that, that governments do when these kind of things start happening. And all the stuff we're talking about and many other things we haven't even talked about are all symptoms of a dying empire. So you can't avoid it. We're all part of this empire, this American, you know, New Age Roman Empire. So, what do you do to, to help alleviate or, or maybe bypass some of the bad stuff that's going to come in? Honestly, the only thing I could say is, what does history show us? Thousands of years, gold and silver is money. And again, you look at the, the cover of that 1988 Economist magazine, which is owned by, partially owned by the Ro uh, Rothschild family. 1988, it said, shows on the front cover, a, a eagle or whatever uh, coming out of the flames of burning currencies right. US dollars and other countries dollars on you know in flames the uh, phoenix whatever rising out of this with a big giant gold coin around its neck and then it's the title is get ready uh, something like get ready for a new world currency in 2018 so back to the terrorist attacks and all this other stuff they're gearing us up so that they can have total control and usher us right into there you're not going to have a say you're not going to be able to say, well, let's vote on it in America. Nope, there's maybe a terrorist attack happened. They had to you know, pass these new Patriot Act 3.0. And as part of that, you know, the Congress, they didn't read it all like they never do. And under the fine print, it says that we can make these agreements. You know, the president can write an executive order, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then the next thing you know, they're going to try to force us into this new world currency. And they'll blame it on terrorism and all this other stuff that, again, they allowed to happen, helped happen, or actually did it themselves. One Joe, we we talked about the the club, you know, being exposed to all these derivatives, zero interest rate policies, negative interest rate policies. So they're dependent on a rising market. And I know you've talked about oil, them allowing oil to go as low as it did, and it, it would appear that oil going up has been has had a positive impact on the market. Does the market need? oil to go up and i guess i'm asking does the club need oil to go higher to lift the markets and for them to keep this ponzi scheme going because it seems like the only way they continue to keep everything together is asset prices you know financialized asset prices continuing to rise yeah i don't think that oil has anything to do with as far as the broader markets because if you look at the very beginning of 2015 that's when it started to go down the, the price of oil and 
now you know it's been as low as in the, in the high 20s or whatever and recently you know trying to get back to 40 and bouncing around that sort of thing but even back in 2015 and now the markets were still going up you know as oil was actually coming down and then it got hit even harder oil did and look at you know we're back up to 17,005 whatever six seven uh, Dow Jones you know so it's it's again it's just they control everything not one of those pieces whether it's oil or precious metals or anything affects the rest of it because they control all of it um, the only thing that I would say is that when they do drop the price of oil you know the big three oil companies that's the clubs they're, they're gonna take a beating however when you have decades and decades and decades of making billions and billions and billions and billions it's not like the country in other words the US with the with our big oil companies the US was you know d dependent on our oil exports it doesn't matter these were just private companies so they can withstand a severe beating if they have to whereas the OPEC nations or, or as well as Russia or anyone else who's exporting oil many of them rely you know 80 90 percent on oil exports so if their prices take a hit the country itself is taking a hit so that's why I believe they're destroying the price of oil to put a massive strain on all these countries so that they do go into further debt massively and then of course a war is going to start they're going to then have to finance that war these countries are going to be so bankrupt that when you know and again I don't know if it's 2018 like the magazine cover said but when they get ready to pull the trigger on the new world order thing they got to make sure every country in the world is in severe financial condition and that the peasants that's all of us are begging our governments make the pain stop please make the pain stop we'll do anything and the government's gonna reply and say we got exactly what you need it's called the new world currency and they're gonna come up with all these charts and all these statistics that say look you know we had currency wars with China and they theirs was six dollars to our you know to our one and guys if we had a single currency you couldn't have a currency war and if you had a single currency you couldn't have trade wars mm. you know it's just, it's just better for everybody and honestly, and on the surface, it actually does sound good. Like, you know, that does actually make sense. But we've all been around for a while, and, and humans have been around. You know, our ancestors have been along for a lot longer. And again, gold and silver is money. So the only way the club's going to make this work is if they tell the rest of the world, by the way, this new currency is going to be backed by precious metals. Because yeah, nobody in their right mind is going to want to accept, let's go back to fiat, even though it's a one-world fiat. No one's going to want to do that. After they get destroyed, their financial lives get destroyed, they're not going to accept that. You know, the narrative has been that OPEC was trying to crush the shale oil company. So it, it's actually rather interesting to see, uh, to, to, to listen to your thoughts on that. And that the club, you know, more U.S. based, is trying to crush OPEC, who would seemingly be more dependent on a higher oil price. So, yeah, I mean, interesting analysis right there. Uh, Joe. So, you know, with that, I, I, I want to give you opportunity to just share, you know, any final thoughts that you, you know, didn't get to or had on your mind or just some advice for people here in 2016 uh, dealing with this current situation. Well, I'm, I'll start off quickly with some advice and then I want to and I'll end it with uh, talking about pensions for a second. Uh, the advice, which I have been saying recently in my videos, is I used to have three. You should always have protection at your house. Guns, right? We live in America. You're allowed to have a gun for protection. You're going to probably need it in the future. Get guns. Have a nice food storage. Freeze dried, dehydrated. You never know what's going to happen. It's nice to have a nice backup supply. Third was precious metals. And I've added a fourth one recently, and that is a very good water filtration system for your drinking water at your house. Hmm. That is like a reverse osmosis four or five stage filter. Because when you hear all these stories, Fukushima and Gulf oil spill and everything else that's happening, and now we've got radiation leaks and all this crap happening, even in America, we had the oil, uh, the gas well, the other, you know, recently spewing out. We've had, uh, I think it was in Michigan, lead in the water. Now there's another one, I think in South Florida. You know, that's my state. There are also lead levels are rising. It's like, how many other places does this happen? And, and we don't even know. But, you know, and no one's even telling you, and the government or the school or whoever's in charge is not even going to say anything. Wow. So it's like, you just got to take control. So that's my recommendation for people. But on to pensions quickly. Pensions, they're finished. If anyone out there is relying on a pension and you get offered, uh, you know, we'll buy you, you know, here's a lump sum for your pension. I'm <laughs> telling it. you right now, you better take that without even, you better be first in line. 
and say, I'll take it. When do, where do I sign? Because <laughs> the alternative is not going to be looking good. When yeah. these derivatives go, all these pensions, you know, people think, oh, my pension is just, it's like just a nest egg built up. But a lot of people don't realize pensions are also invested in the markets. Mm. So if the markets take a dump, I mean a big dump, you are absolutely finished. And that's exactly what's ultimately going to happen. I mean, here's, I'm just reading this today. Sears strikes pension deal, prepares for the worst. Despite putting on a brave front for so long, even Sears holding itself seems willing to admit there is a good chance the company does not survive its current struggles. Sears inked a five-year deal with the Federal Pension Benefits Guarantee Corp to salvage the pensions of some 200,000 employees if it was forced to terminate the plan. Although the PBGC says the retailer is currently making the uh, necessary minimum payments, Sears does not have enough assets left to cover the liabilities if it ended the plan. And let me tell you, it is going to end the plan. And if it does, the unfunded liabilities, just for them alone, is $76.3 billion. Wow. It's over. It's finished. So, I mean, I don't want to tell, you know, a lot of times people it's like, oh, but I earned that pension and I've you know, I worked 20 years or whatever it is, you know, the length of time and I, I deserve it and I was promised it and now I'm ready to retire and I just started get, getting it. You know, I've got a lifestyle built up, my house payments, everything's relying on me getting that pension. I'm here to tell you, you better start looking around and downsizing to deal with this because there, it's going to come. There might be a few out there that actually survive somehow and say, you know what, the state did a great job and blah, 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 and it just somehow worked out better. And, or, or maybe they didn't have to cut it as bad. But the, the general meme for pensions is they are absolutely finished. It's the same as the Roman Empire. I talk about the Roman Empire all the time. They couldn't fund it. These are unfunded liabilities. Then we take into account our you know, Medicaid system, health care system in this country, Social Security. Oh, that's why I'm telling you, if you get these precious metals, when these things go crazy, and that's where people are going to put their money when they see what happens to everything else. You stand to make a small fortune, not even on purpose. And I'm not trying to tell people to invest in this to make like, you know, play the market. No, this is only for protection. But I've come to realize when this goes down, it ain't going to be no little move mm. in precious metals. It, they're going to be huge. And you're going to, and I told everybody, get ready for the day when I come on here and I say, hey, I just bought my house free and clear with some of my, with some of my silver. And I don't have a whole bunch of silver anyways. And I said, that day will come. And you, I can't wait for it. You know, Joe, it's amazing, you know, and I'm reminded talking with you how we're all just dependent, even uh, just society in general, people who haven't prepared are so dependent on a rising market from pensions, social security, taxes, the banks, their exposure to derivatives, you know, war, all of these things, precious metals, everything is dependent now on th these markets and you know if what you're saying is to be independent and, and to get away from this dependency on that and to be ahead of it so it is very very good advice uh man it, you know if you really do point out that there are some major instabilities out there and when this thing lets loose it could be really bad so i i appreciate you coming on the show and sharing this information with us and just signaling the importance of of this to people so uh joe if people wanted to learn more about you uh, and find you where would they go and what would they find you're better off going to youtube and just search for j snip for the letter j snip for or you can search for realist news because i start all my videos with that and you, you'll find me just you can subscribe and you know keep up to date with everything i will i wanted to add one more comment though to what you said okay and that is we were talking about war and they're gearing us up for war and all that. So imagine this, right? Here's the perfect scenario. The, they know they have to let these markets and the paper crap just die off and crash. If they can start a war and keep you into fear and terrorists and bombs are going off and I'm scared to go outside, I'm scared to do this, they're going to scare people away from protesting. So they have all this happen right at the same time. Matter of fact, they may even blame ISIS for a market crash. Oh, my, ISIS set a bomb off on the COMEX or, you know, whatever. Now, all of a sudden, they've got the terrorism, so you're scared to death. Your retirement's crashing. You're very upset about that. However, it's due to ISIS, not the club. 
<laughs> they're gonna make sure you you point at them, not the club. So you're really angry at these Muslim people now. Now you're ready to go to war, while simultaneously you're dealing with the destruction of your retirement. So the club is always gonna try to shift blame somewhere else. So I can see these two things kind of seemingly going together. So when I start to see things like what's happening in Brussels, bombs going off and all this terrorism stuff, again, real or contrived, whatever, either way, it lets me know they're, it's probably the, the collapse of the economies uh, It's that much closer. So they want to get those things to happen probably simultaneously as, as much as possible. That's my opinion. So I, do, I just wanted to add that last piece. Yeah. No, I, I, excellent. Excellent analysis. Uh, Joe, thanks so much for coming on the show with me today and taking the time. Anytime.